Father, we thank you. We thank you for the Lord, um, the power of your word, Lord. Just truth, liberating, so alive and powerful. God, we thank you that your word is able to penetrate our thoughts. God, your word is able to penetrate the confusion in our minds. And your word is able to clarify, O oh God, what is of the heart and the intents of the heart and thoughts of the mind, God. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you even as we soak in your word. We pray, Lord, for clarity. We pray that, um, Lord, as your word declares that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Yes, Master. May we see that ordering, Lord. May we experience that ordering in our lives, Father God. And also, Lord, your word declares that the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter as unto the noonday. And so, God, we, we pray for that clarity um, uh, for each one of us, God. We thank you, God. We, will, we believe and we have declared and we know that we will see the outcome of it, God. We thank you. We come at this time, we come at this day into your mighty hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, you know, we've been looking at uh, uh, organizing and uh, in last class, uh, we were looking at uh, raising up leaders and also some of the things that, um, that will actually enable us to raise up leaders. Um, and we also looked at the different stages, right? Different stages of, um, uh, of growth or different stages in the development of, uh, of a leader, right? So we looked at all that uh, and uh, and we we saw that some of the things that can really be act as a catalyst or uh, you know speed up uh, that entire process of uh, uh, raising up leaders is uh, when we actually um, just a minute. so when we uh, when we create opportunities for developing leaders right so when we we saw that uh, when we make space for developing leaders maybe maybe create an opportunity uh, which is not there um of course we're not you know it's not like uh, time structuring in the sense okay i i want this guy to do something so let me uh, you know uh, do let me create something to keep him busy no it's not that right uh, we we are creating something in line with the vision and in line with uh, you know with whatever uh, opportunities are there or could be there potential where that could be there and we uh, we create that that space uh, and uh, it's based on the need as well, right? So when there is a need, when there is a, a requirement, and we uh, maybe we, you know, we we, we didn't see that all the, all these while, but we see that need, and we see okay, here's a here's this person, and uh, uh, that person can actually be a good fit, and uh, that person can uh, take this up. So, so we are actually uh, opening up that opportunity for the you know potential leader or for nurturing the leader. So, this actually develops the leader. Okay, uh, and it's a it's a you know uh, hastens uh, the qualities and uh, everything that is required from the leader. So, um, it's it's a good way to uh, to do that. And let me just share the screen with you. So. Okay. Okay. So, um, and so we create opportunities, create that space, and uh, and allow the person to step in, right? And while while taking note of all that different stages, you know, just uh, if somebody is just uh, stepping in, it's just a you know new thing for them. Then we give that time and space, and our involvement, uh, like we said, our involvement is going to be. Um, well, pretty uh, uh, um, almost. We're uh, going to be closely involved um, and not very disengaged, right? Because it's um, it's the introductory or the um, you know, initial stage of development. So, um, if it is that stage of preparatory stage, then we will we will stay engaged, stay involved, right? Um, another way to get people to uh, to I mean, for getting leaders to develop, for development of leaders, what really helps is to um, enable them to see the leader. Uh, we're talking, you know, mainly about uh, ministry here. So, if it's ministry, if it's ministry opportunities, um, where 
the leader or the potential the leader in development gets to see the leader who is developing that person who's speaking into their life to uh, to see actually the life example to get to see the life example of that person like paul uh, you know did with timothy uh, and with um, uh, you know maybe with titus and and the others in the team so he uh, so uh, timothy saw all that happened you know, all the struggle that he went through um, the way he handled uh, situations uh, the way he you know i'm sure that paul would have spent time discussing with timothy and timothy was also carrying um, the epistles uh, to the church and uh, churches and so on so uh, to especially to Corinth and so um, well uh, so Timothy had uh, Paul had actually given him access or uh, uh, allowed him to see uh, who he was right? and uh, he was an example and he, he said so in as many words right? he said be imitators of God as I imitate Christ so um, so Timothy had seen him, and uh, you know we, we see that he had also developed into a fine leader, a fine minister, right? Which he could, Paul could actually commend and recommend to people, and so on. So, um, so that's that's one uh, aspect, very important aspect as well. You know, where it's not, uh, it need not necessarily be a formal training session, but the person is actually getting trained by watching by observing by seeing the you know the good bad and the ugly right uh, seeing the negative things seeing the positive things uh, and the, and it's a very um, enriching lesson how to do how not to do as well right um so uh, you know when uh, i think uh, uh, early on lesson for for us as ministers in, you know in the being in the leadership team of the church was to see you know uh, and interact with pastor and pastor ashish and when we, when we travel together and to see how he you know uh, engaged with other ministers of god engaged with other people um and um, and the thing is you know especially when when we are not uh, um, let's say when we are not on stage or not in the uh, in front of the podium uh, off the podium off stage um, you know, the, the lessons learned were very valuable, you know, for example, like there's a food line, just stay in line, stand in line with the play, just like anyone else. And so, uh, well, everybody's like, well, no, you know, Pastor, you come, you do this, you know, I, let me take your plate, let me carry your Bible. And then you would have none of that, right? Saying, okay, we are just, you know, uh, one of you. And uh, it's just that, well, we've been invited, we have an opportunity to minister, but Apart from that, we are not like, uh, you know, superstars or celebrities. So, um, so nothing of that hype, right? So, so that was, uh, those were early lessons to be learned. So, uh, which, which stays with you and, you know, and these are, these are things that develop you as you grow. And so, um, so you don't want any of that either, right? As you take up a, a role as a minister and a leader, you don't want any of that. And uh, and so when others who watch you, well, they don't want any of that. So it's an important lesson that is being passed on, a legacy that is passed on, um, when a leader uh, opens up and uh, and gets to display, you know, his life, put on display rather, uh, his life and his uh, the way he engages and ministers to the other younger generation, right? Okay. So, uh, so this develops leaders. So you're not really showing only your best side, right? It's showing how you handle pressure, you know, showing how uh, you know you're vulnerable to certain things and uh, what mistakes you've made and how you recovered from those mistakes. All that, all that goes on to you know develop uh, the leader, right? Okay. Um, another important intentional thing to develop leaders, just like creating opportunities and letting them um, see your life example, is also to provide provide feedback, uh, encouragement, and correction. Right. So we'll take the first one, feedback. So feedback is uh, to uh, feed information back into the system. Right. 
So when we say feedback, it is like going back. Um, you you receive something and then you you know take it back to the source. So maybe the person has said something or done something, and you receive that information. And you're feeding it back to the person. So it is a, a feedback about. Uh, their performance it is a feedback about uh, maybe their mistake but uh, or how they did uh, how they fared what they did a feedback always helps right so uh, a feedback and also encouragement right so um, and and most importantly correction right so when it comes to uh, you know developing leaders if we neglect correction then we are actually allowing the mistake to, for uh, uh, I mean, we're doing an injustice because uh, we are actually affirming their mistake, right? Or maybe they have a, uh, a weakness, and uh, we are not actually pointing out or calling it out or drawing attention to that. So the the problem is this: you know, we need to do it, uh, like speak the truth in love, right? and do it uh, with a gentle spirit and do it in a way that does not break the person right does not uh, in any way uh, rob the dignity of that person right because after all they are made in god's image and uh, and like peter says that uh, well they are god's flock at the end of the day right people are god's flock among whom we have been placed as uh, as ministers, right? as shepherds. So they all belong to the chief shepherd. So we need to, you know, keep that in mind as we correct as well. So don't break the person. Don't, uh, you know, mess with the dignity of the person. But present the fact. I don't hold back the fact. When it comes to correction, normally what happens is, uh, you know. Uh, we, we probably share eighty percent of what we had in our heart, what what we had in our mind. You know, eighty percent of it, but that last twenty percent is what really matters. You know, that's the important stuff. But we are unsure. You know, how will this person take it, or should I? Should I not? And we hold back that twenty percent, which which is really important. Right. So uh, for some you know, sharing. Uh, or correcting people comes naturally. It's part part of their temperament. It's part of their personality, and they do it with grace. But for some, you know, some of us, we need to learn. We need to learn to confront uh, in a in a God honoring manner. Right? We need to confront in a, in a in a manner that's um, you know that really edifies the person. Right? In a in an atmosphere of love, encouragement, and support. Okay, that's very important. So when we do that, then there is development. You know, something of value has been shared with the person. Now, well, the other person can actually receive it well, not receive it well. You know, that, that is always there. That risk is always there. Right? Uh, the person could probably you know, get offended, uh, and so on, get angry, upset, you know. uh, no matter how nicely we share, you know, no matter uh, in whatever encouragement, encouraging manner it is done, there is always that risk of that happening. But that should not, uh, that risk um, or that uh, the risk of that outcome should not stop us as leaders uh, in this whole process of leadership development, should not stop us from uh, correcting in the right way, right? Um, so feedback. Uh, so many many examples that we see of correction is that people are, you know, they just vent their anger, you know, uh, because because the thing is, yeah, it, it it has probably made them angry. The mistake that the you know person has made probably has made them ang angry. Maybe the mistake was at result in 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 some. It was a costly mistake, right? It had some very. Uh, uh, strong consequences okay um, but at the same time we need to do it in uh, uh, we need to do it firmly we need to do it um, in this manner right 
Um, and I'm sure that there are so there will be times when uh, those mistakes are repeated. The mistakes are, uh, you know, it's uh, people have not learned from the the lessons and uh, sterner measures right, need to be uh, sterner consequences have to be spelt out and carried out uh, when it comes to you know when it comes to that. But we're just looking at feedback, encouragement, and correction. You know, in developing leaders. Okay, so. Um, so the problem is not an attitude. The problem is not maybe it was a blind spot, and uh, we need to make sure this this is done. Okay, feedback really helps. Feedback um, maybe it was a complete blind spot, and you're sharing. Okay, this is how it is. So it it really helps the person. Um, encouragement uh, really helps the person. Affirms the fact that okay, I'm on a right path, and uh, you know what you share really builds the person up and correction as well so um you know um so feedback and correction you know uh, encouragement everybody loves uh feedback and correction well nobody likes to get and especially if the feedback is a negative feedback um, nobody uh, likes to just receive that but uh, but even for us as leaders you know we receive feedback if we would you know, if we would look at it this way, okay, here's some information uh, that's coming my way. And even if there is a, you know, a small percentage of truth in it, you know, it could come clothed in emotions. It could come, um, you know, maybe with a lot of assumptions, maybe, maybe there's just one one percent of truth in it, but the other things are all just assumptions and very subjective things, right? Just coming as a feedback. No problem. You know, we We will take it for that one person you know for because that one person matters because one person we see it as a truth and then we can we can make changes to that right so uh, so it's always you know not it's, it's always good not to shut down that that uh, uh, that avenue of feedback right because once we shut it down then we are actually not receiving uh, that uh, valuable uh, feedback and uh, that I, maybe some good ideas might come and we are actually shutting it off. Right? Uh, we are saying that okay, it's not it's not welcome, uh, you know, and then that that stops coming. Okay, um, so even if uh, you know not eight out of ten feedback uh, that you receive are you know you, you just realize that hey, it's biased, it's, it should be prejudiced. You know, just keep it going, right? And the same way, you know, sharing with others also. Uh, we pick the time, we pick the right opportunity. And then feedback has to be shared, you know. And many a times, uh, the feedback and correction has to be uh, is time bound, right? It's time bound in the sense um, certain things have to be said immediately, have to be done immediately. Uh, you cannot wait. Well, certain things which are non-critical can probably, you know, we can wait uh, for the right time, right moment, and and just share. You know, it's not of critical value. But some things have to be shared immediately, and while you while it is still fresh in memory, it has, it has to be done, right? Okay. So, um, so the thing is this: that as leaders, we need to develop more leaders. Okay. Uh, we need to uh, build people up so that they have the strength to carry the responsibilities of leadership. The responsibility of building people you know when you look at ministry we see that it is actually about building people right uh, and that's why god refers to people as god's god's building and he refers to uh, paul refers to you know people as uh, god's field okay so both have the picture of you know a building has the whole thing of uh, there's a blueprint and you're you know bringing the material and there's a lot of work involved in in seeing that to completion the field also has the same thing right where you're sowing and uh, there's a process involved there's a nurture there's protection against the elements and then there is a process again there is time there is a process and there is development happening right so um so this uh, all of us we need to understand that uh, as as ministers we need to understand that and as people who are called to disciple right what is discipleship you know, teaching people to follow the one uh, who's called us to be disciples 
but we do it in community and uh, discipleship is you know building people up so so there's no escaping the fact that we need to raise up leaders okay and uh, and this is something which is very important as part of our leadership development as well okay any questions here um before we go into decision making any any doubts any questions None whatsoever. Okay. Um, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so the feedback uh, we, we are mentioning right now is uh, as we develop leaders, and um, when it comes to pastoral ministry or uh, leading a church, do we also give feedback to congregation members, especially in the area of character? If you hear something wrong. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, you know, if, you know if, 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 uh, so if it's uh, something that we have observed personally and uh, something that, uh, you know, it, there's a couple of things. You no, know, one is people observe and people tell us. And uh, the other thing is if we, uh, we observe it personally, we see it and, uh, you know, we, uh, we know for sure, okay, this is what, what it is because people could, I mean, if it's a one-off thing, well, we 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 kind of need to ensure that it is uh, it's not not just a one one-off thing. It's not just a casual observation, but uh, you know, it is it is it is a pattern before we actually venture in and do that. But uh, but yes, you know, we we need to do that. Um, only then there will be change. You know, for like sometimes it could be a very genuinely uh, I mean, a, a blind spot, which people think that, okay, it's okay, I can get by. Uh, sometimes it's, it's willingly done, intentionally done. Um, but as we um, do it in a, again, the, the intention is not to bring them down, the intention is to, you know, help them in our chair and, um, and it will be helpful. Yeah. Yes, boss. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Right. Right. Okay. So, um, so let's just move on to the next one, which is uh, decision making within the organization. Again, I just wanted to, um, you know, uh, just make this uh, clear that we will, uh, we we will actually have, um, you know, we're looking at all this in church administration in detail. Uh, but however, you know, we'll just mention this. Uh, so it'll be a reiteration when you look at church administration again, right? So decision making within the organization. So uh, leadership in a formal structure. Um, so first of all, we just understand that when you, when you look at ministry, right? Ministry is both. Uh, uh, we know it's uh, it's spiritual, and also has its natural side to it. In the sense, you know, there are certain things that need to be done. Like if you look at, uh, you know. Uh, if you look at the book of Acts itself, Acts, and then we see that uh, there was some problem with the distribution, daily distribution, right? So what was it? Uh, it was actually an administrative issue, right? A, a logistical need uh, that had to be met, right? So Acts chapter six, we see that, okay, some were neglected, those were neglected, and then the others were actually raised up. There were seven who were chosen to take care of that. Okay. So we need to understand that in, spirit, in in ministry, there is the administrative, there is the logistical uh, side of it, or the organizational side of it. You know, as much as church is a family, church is, uh, you know, also in an organization, or it has an organization side to it. If we ignore that, well, it it can be uh, it'll be self defeating. See, as a leader, if you want to do certain things, if you ignore that part of it, then it's it's really going to, uh, you know, it's going to have a negative impact on the spiritual side of ministry. Okay, Simple things like, okay, you know, place needs to be clean, chairs need to be there, you know, all, the, all that requires planning and uh, implementation of that plan. Simple, right? Any meeting, any gathering, well, you know, there needs to be a, there needs to be a place, the place needs to be clean, 
you know you have simple infrastructure like maybe mats to you know sit on if it's on the floor or um, chairs to sit on etc right uh, electricity or or some kind of light if it's in the evening uh, and maybe washrooms or restrooms or you know all these things right so uh, there is the 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 organizational side of it okay and when it, when it comes to the organization side of it, there are a lot of decisions to be made. Okay, some decisions are daily. Some decisions are, you know, uh, maybe they have a slightly bigger time frame, you know, like weekly, maybe monthly, maybe annually. Certain decisions have to be made uh, for the organizational side of things as well as the spiritual side. Okay, so for making these decisions within the organization. We need to base those decisions on certain standards. Okay, what are what is our reference point? And what are the st standards based on which we are making these decisions? Because these decisions are important, right? So we need to have clarity on the standards based on which we make these decisions. For example, like uh, maybe it's a decision like, uh, okay, we need to order food for maybe 100 people, you know, there's this meeting, we need to order food. And uh, so certain standards like, okay, the food needs to be tasty, food needs to arrive on time, food needs to be hot. And uh, when the person comes to serve the food, we need to have so many you know, plates and uh, whatever, you know, serving utensils and so on. So the person who's actually preparing the food and bringing it has to be uh, you know, capable enough to carry this out. Okay, uh, reliant, consistent, dependable, right? So, let's say this is a caterer. So it's a vendor. So within the organization, you make that standard clear that if we are choosing a vendor, the vendor has to have these capabilities, right? So whoever's choosing a vendor and also the pricing right okay this is you know per plate this is how much they are going to charge okay and uh, is it reasonable is it affordable is it uh, you know is it so all these things so you we need to have standards based on you know punctuality cleanliness the quality of food etc for a for a caterer so like these like these standards, like these qualities, for every decision that is made, it could be decisions of, uh, you know, uh, maybe stationery needs to be purchased. It could be decisions like uh, maybe some computers need to be bought, or everyday decisions, right, on consumables, uh, perishables, or maybe some assets like land, or you know, decisions. There needs to be standard. Like they need to be, we need to have some standards. So these standards have to be clear to everyone in the ministry team, everyone serving. So the best way to do it is to document it and put it in a place where it's clear for everybody, where it's uh, where people can refer to it, like maybe a file if it's something physical, or maybe if it's on a drive. Or, um, like a Google Drive or, or on a cloud or something where people can actually refer to. So whoever joins, whoever joins the team or whoever has a doubt can refer to the, the standards of uh, operation, right? And, you know, many of these things we, we actually, uh, you know, are shared. You know, if you're working in a secular organization, if you're joining the team, uh, you would get an appointment letter, and, and along with the appointment letter, your role and responsibilities, and you know those standards and values and everything are shared. Um, so, you know, the same thing can be done, or it has to be done, when you're in an organization, uh, in a ministry, uh, in an organization which is involved in ministry work. So this this helps uh, in uh, effective uh, and efficient ways in which decisions can be made right so uh, making standards clear the standards based on which you're making the decision it's very very important okay so 
uh, we don't you know we don't uh, shift away from these uh, standards when it comes to making decisions okay. then we also need to have a system in place okay for the approval of these decisions okay so what do we mean by that so um, certain decisions would need uh, approval from somebody who is uh, probably carrying a bigger responsibility or somebody who is overseeing uh, the entire ministry maybe right uh, for example maybe as a you know as an associate pastor i can approve certain financial decisions you know certain buying things i can approve for maybe i can i can just approve certain things for you know daily uh, use of uh, you know maybe stationary maybe consumables i can approve up to a certain amount of money right even buying of certain maybe instruments certain gadgets uh, you know certain cables and etc um, i can approve up to a certain amount of money maybe 15000 20000 i can approve that and say go ahead but if it's going to be a major purchase like a piece of land maybe uh, you know a building or you know maybe a gadget which is or an instrument or some equipment which is uh, which is an asset to the organization and uh, it's worth in, uh, in uh, you know the the worth of that is uh, the price of that is is running into thousands and maybe a few lakhs then uh, someone else needs to approve so what is that system of approval okay so if that is clear you know, then I, I can I can say that okay you know this I can approve I can sign off we can go ahead and buy but if there's if it's since if this amount whatever we are considering for purchase um, you know this printer this laptop that we are purchasing is running into uh, uh, you know a few hundred, hundreds of thousands then we it's better you know I, I can suggest this to someone else who has the capability to approve or who so that process okay if not me then who so that process has to be clear and that also if we can you know document it okay it can be just buying decisions maybe spending decisions maybe hiring right uh, all that so this also when we document it when we keep it uh, when everybody is clear then that process uh, happens uh, quickly it happens uh, you know no, nobody is doubt you know nobody is questioning okay now who needs to do this uh, maybe w once you check and you you see that it's clear then just go ahead with it you know every time we face that situation uh, or we are in that place of maybe buying spending hiring whatever it's we already know that okay this is whom this this is the person who has to approve it this is the person who has to clear the quality all that right so that process also needs to be clear okay uh, okay so this is uh, we're looking at decision making within the organization okay another thing important thing is to have a, a open channel for discussion okay um so having a we're going to look at you know, culture and values um, so this open channel for discussion open channel for receiving feedback uh, so this will actually help us to make good decisions right because we have this open channel some some good ideas right some good corrections would come from so we could actually uh, people could share and people could say okay you now before we consider this you know why don't we look at this look at this option also and then so if that kind of a culture is not there if the culture is okay, I better mind my business. Um, you know, I I know you know I've, sh I've shared so many ideas in the past, not, none of it has been taken, so I don't want to do that. Right. So so the thing is, the understanding it should be you know that if you have ideas, share it. Not everything can be implemented, may not be you know, uh, immediately taken care of, but no problem. You know, it's just that we are thinking of doing a better thing, but you know as far as you. You know, as as far as options are concerned, if you have any ideas, you know, please go ahead and share it. Right? If that that kind of a culture is there, 
then uh, and also in what way can those ideas be shared right uh, in what forum should it be shared then it uh, then it has a very healthy culture and also we're saying you know as as leaders we are open for discussing this we are open for inputs right from from the team so this kind of culture has to be actually intentionally developed okay so when we are open uh, then the decision making process is also you know is is made stronger okay uh, then the last thing is when it comes to decision making within the organization is that as a leader we need to take risk well, as leaders we need to take responsibility for the decisions that are made right uh, the final responsibility for the decisions um it rests with the leader right so considering all the outcomes considering all the consequences pros and cons you make the decision so the ultimate responsibility is with you as a leader which means that the consequence of the de decision is also you know with us to face the consequence of the decision you know if it's a good decision great but if it's a if it's a poor decision or a bad decision then the consequence or outcome of that decision also we need to face as leaders okay so we cannot pass on the blame and say okay this person that person you know ultimately we are responsible so responsible for making the decision right uh, and also for facing the outcome of the decision okay so we need to understand that so there's no um, escaping that there's no shying away from that right um, so as leaders we are responsible any questions in this section uh in this topic okay okay so let's uh, let's look at let's look at um, let's move on let's look at uh, culture and uh, especially kingdom culture okay um and some of it uh, is from the you know the kingdom of god and also from some of our, uh, uh, you know, what we use in church for our membership uh, uh, class, you know, when we um, share about the culture and the values in the church and so on. Um, so here, creating and nurturing a kingdom culture. Okay, I'm sure that, you know, uh, those of us who worked in a couple of organizations or, you know, uh, or maybe, you know, just, step into a church you know there are certain things that uh, that you notice right away okay with the way things are done um the way certain things are done certain things are not done uh, you know the the people and and uh, and certain things that you notice are you know the culture of it you know the customs uh, the beliefs things that they esteem highly okay the value they value and and these things need not be you know written down on paper but it's it's understood and this is how they do it like for example uh, I, I remember going to a church where um, um, i mean this was actually not a church service but it was their bible study right it was a midweek bible study which we uh, which we used to you know uh, go and then uh, before we you know, started serving here in church. So we used to go to church and then midweek Bible study. So what I noticed was that, uh, you know, um, the, the person who comes the earliest always sat right in front, okay? So let's say, you know, for the, there's a family of five, they're coming and they are, you know, they're early, they're on time. They would, they would not sit anywhere else, no, no, not nowhere in the middle, but they would just sit in the, right in front and the ones who maybe and maybe that front row is filled then you know the next row will be filled and so on so i found that very interesting uh so these are of course regular people so you know we went there as newcomers and we were just thinking okay maybe we should just sit in the back and you know maybe if the meeting goes on for a long time we can slip out uh, but they said you know just go ahead you know we you want to keep uh back rows for those who are coming late so so this was a culture this was a custom, you know, and uh, obviously it must have been uh, the leader would have uh, 
pastor, whoever else was, you know, uh, would have instructed that initially when they were small, maybe, and they continued that doing that. Okay, it was a custom. It was a it was a culture. Right? Um, so that you know that happened. So you notice that, right? Uh, it may not be there in their uh, whatever you know whatever pamphlet they are giving out. It may not be there in the you know information about church on the website. It may not be there. Hey, this is how you sit when you come into church. But it's a culture. It's a custom, right? And also you know some things like uh, okay uh, in this particular church. Well, you, you you walk into certain churches and then you see that people are you know dressed very formally, right? They always have their suit and tie. The, the women are dressed in you know their best, and uh, it's like it's it's like maybe a wedding. You know, you, people are dressed up, right? And you notice that. Okay, so who? Well, who instructed them? Right? It it is the culture, right? So. Um, so you know things like this customs beliefs certain practices um these are the culture of a gathering of people right of a church of an organization and so, so the thing is that this is something very powerful the culture it can be a positive culture which can impact everyone positively or it can be a negative culture I remember going for a church meeting, and this was in North Karnataka, and we, we actually went for uh, it was a, a special meeting. We were we were in, invited to minister, so we went there as a team. And well, the the meeting was supposed to start at ten, so uh, we were there by nine <laughs> to you know set up the things, and we had taken some books, so we set it up. And we were leading worship, so we were kind of, uh, you know, doing a sound check and all that. And uh, well, we did all that, and then we had a time of prayer, and we were good to start. Ten o'clock. Well, no one was there, so, so we were just waiting. You know, ten, ten fifteen, ten thirty. You know, half an hour past the starting time is when. Uh, people, you know, just kind of strolled in, and by the time we actually, you know, had to, uh, now this is, uh, we're invited, right? So we can't really start the whole thing. The host has to start the meeting. So we suggested, you know, we can start. I said, no, we'll have to wait. We'll have to wait for people. They'll come. So by the time we started, it was actually 11 a.m. You know, the the invitation is at 10 a.m., but we started at 11. Uh, and that is when the place, you know, the host decided to start. And that is when everybody, you know, kind of. So the thing is, yeah, the culture was that, um, you know, it's an unhealthy culture, right? It's not really respecting people's time. And also, maybe one thing reinforced the other, right? So maybe people understood that, hey, even if you go late, they will anyway stay, start late. So let me go late. So that thing led to people starting late, the host starting late, and 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 so on. You know, it became a cycle of I'm starting late because they are coming late, and they are coming late because you are starting late. It becomes an unhealthy culture, right? So a culture uh, can be positive, can, can be negative, uh, but but it's something that is valuable, and we will we will look at you know kingdom culture. Okay, we'll take a break, and then we'll get back. Thank you.